Well, so you mentioned blowback, and I just, you know, I, the thing that's amazing in kind of really studying your life and career for this is just the number of, it's like a roller coaster. And, and more, I know that is the case in a lot of Hollywood careers, but this is more than most. And I, I guess the first kind of dip, if we can call it that, and we know you came out of it, so I think hopefully it's not something you mind looking at analytically, is just you come out of that period and then there's Daredevil in 2003, Surviving Christmas in 2004, Jersey Girl in 2004, Gigli in 2005, and in the midst of that, the whole, as the tabloid world is exploding with Us Weekly and In Touch and OK and all of that shit, this whole Benefer thing. And I just wonder, do you feel that in hindsight, did you get, did you guys do anything to bring about the attention and hostility that came around? Or was it purely just these guys needing product and you happening to be in the wrong place at the wrong time? That's a pretty good description of that time. And no, I don't mind talking about it at all. It was interesting. I sort of had to make it in the business twice because I became so cold and so not cool and so out of it that I had to sort of totally reinvent my career, you know, and it was hard because now I was starting before I was just starting at the, you know, at the, the start line. And now I had to start sort of a mile further back, you know, um, because people not only had no perception of me, but a, a negative one fostered by a really reckless and irresponsible tabloid press that would just write things that weren't true. And a, as you very astutely described, we happened, you know, there's always a story of the month, a story of the six, whatever it is, you know, and we, uh, me dating Jennifer Lopez happened to be that tabloid story at the time when that business grew exponentially, when they realized there's, there's actually 10 times a bigger audience for our product than we're selling to. So there was this proliferation. Us Weekly went from a sort of celebrity friendly interview thing to a tabloid. The tabloids exploded. The internet started. You had your, you know, the Perez Hilton's, all that kind of stuff. And they needed something to write about. And we were that thing. And so I think there was a natural reaction to like, wait a minute, why am I hearing about you every day and seeing you on every newsstand? That that's a, would engender enormous amount of resentment anyway, just that sort of like, mm -hmm. and there is like, even you asked me, but when you think about it, the answer is so obvious. Like, why in the world would I have wanted that? Why would I have mm -hmm. sought that out? People it's still, to this day, they'll go like, you know, I see you out there like, in the paparazzi and the pictures, it's like, yes, I left my house and took out the track. <laughs> it's not like I'm trying to, and they said, well, you're taking a pack walk as if, if you leave your house, you're only doing so in the hopes that you should be so lucky that you could end up as the sixth item in the daily mail. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's absurd. And particularly in that case, there was this, and at first it was like Dick and Liz. It was this sort of infatuation. What an interesting couple. And then there was a ton of resentment, a ton of resentment against me, a ton of resentment against Jennifer. The irony is not lost on me huh? that Jennifer now, I mean, people were so fucking mean about her, sexist, racist, you know, ugly, vicious shit was written about her in ways that uh, if you wrote it now, you would literally be fired yeah. for saying those things yeah. you said. Now it's like she's lionized and respected for the work she did, where she came from, what she accomplished, as well she fucking should be. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I see her accomplishments as like, I, I, I would say you have a better chance from the Bronx uh, being a Latina of ending up as like, uh, you know, Sotomayor on the Supreme Court than you do of having Jennifer Lopez's career and being who she is at 50 years old today. That mm -hmm. is not that one has more value than the other. I understand right, right, right. that. But right, right, right. Th that, you know, just on a pure odds level, on a pure hard work. I, I don't think I met anybody who worked any harder than Jennifer Lopez. And she was very much like a, a, um, the kind of girl that I went to high school with. It was a very socioeconomically mixed, ethnically mixed place. I didn't, those kinds of differences that so seemed to shock America uh, were <laughs> meaningless to me. And, and then there was this sort of idea that you're, you want this, you want this attention. And that coinciding with not Daredevil, which was not a good movie. And then to have the, to, to have that tablet experience coupled with Jersey Girl is not a bad movie at all. Uh, no. Driving Christmas was not a very good movie. And Gigli turned out to be a, a, a kind of a disaster. But it's not like people say, oh, it's the famous bomb. It's like, actually, if you watch it, and 99% of people who say, oh, this is so bad, obviously I haven't seen it. The problem with Gigli was 
you know, first of all, Marty is a brilliant director and a brilliant guy. He did movies, you know, like Ben I Run, like Sent of a Woman. I mean, he's he, a Beverly Hills cop. I mean, this is a guy who understands filmmaking. What happened was, you know, he was trying to sort of, he, he had done Meet Joe Black and he was sort of trying to do this story about a guy who's a lesbian. She leaves him halfway through. He ends up getting killed. It's kind of a, I used to say, we're kind of making a Polish art movie here uh, for Sony. <laughs> And then um, the Jennifer. Then I started dating Jennifer, and the tabloids were sort of so interested in it in a positive way at first that the studio decided, oh no, 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 they got to stay together at the end. That's what America wants. America wants to see these two in love, and so we defied the reshoots to sort of put a oh. horse's head on a cow's body and to try to make a romantic comedy out of this movie. 